Welcome YouTubers and Zoomers. Today we're going to do something that is a cool out kind of practice, but it, there's going to be some poses that are going to be challenging and it, you might break into a sweat just doing, holding a pose for longer than you want. So I hope you have blocks. If you don't have blocks, you can have um, rolled up towels or textbooks. Who has textbooks anymore? Or uh, phone books? No, nobody has those. But find something that will elevate you and a bolster. And it doesn't matter whether it's round or, or the other, the more rectangular ones. So get your music going. <clears throat> Just find music really important to keep the rhythm and the attention and a, perhaps a little bit of a distraction. Hmm. Yes. So we're going to take our blocks and we're going to set them up at the back of our mat in a T. So have this one at the medium, the, the one that's going to be underneath your spine at the medium level. Okay, so that your chest is going to be lifted. And you don't want the bottom to be digging in below your rib cage because that, that's not going to feel good. So, you, so this is why this is a good, a good uh, length. <laughs> but most of them are always these, these lengths anyway. And then the other one is going to be, you're going to start off at the highest level. I know you're going to enjoy this because usually we just go right into salutations and we're doing things that are hard right away. But we're going to start this out, cooled out, <laughs> zenned out. So just set up, like I'm taking my fingers behind and I'm just making sure that I land. I don't want my neck to be on this block, but I want the center. For those of you who are wearing bras, it would be where your bra strap is. And then you take the other one and you're going to put that. Oh, man. Woo! at the back of the middle of your head. So one of the things that I see when people do this, it's such a huge impact into their chest and into their shoulders and their neck that they immediately jut out their chin. So I'd like you to lift your head and just slightly tuck your chin and then see if the, you can take one hand on your forehead, another one on your heart and feel if those hands are parallel to each other. And then if they are, then you're, then you're perfect. And then you're going to have your arms out. You can have them any way that make sure that you feel your armpits growing. And then allow your knees to tent towards each other. Oh. And because we're going to be here for a moment, you can close your eyes and really truly feel oh, the inhale and the exhale. Start moving through your body. This is a great practice to do, say at the end of a day where you've been crunched over your, you're working from home, crunched over your desk. I hope you have a good chair though. And um, you, need, you need to do something in the evening, but you don't have enough energy. This is one of those practices where the, you're really letting go of the day. And even though we, the Zoomers today, are with me in the morning, um, this is also just will inform the rest of your day. You just become aware. You think, oh, I woke up. I was good. What the heck? So we're, we carry a lot of stuff. In the morning when we wake up, we have built overnight pathways for connective tissue. We've repaired everything. It's actually a brand new body uh, for a lot of cells and a lot of the parts that we use each day, a little bit of repair. So you are feeling stuff from overnight or even from yesterday. Mm, nice. Dig your elbows in. Bring your arms close into your rib cage. Bring your feet close into your pelvis, soles of feet on the floor. Now dig, it doesn't matter which elbow, you dig elbow right or left, 
and roll over to that side. So you're supporting yourself and falling off slowly. Oh, your blocks. Nice. Now take your other hand and move, move the blocks out of the way because we're going to fall back, roll back onto our spine with our knees bent. And you're going to feel that. Whoa. Woo. Notice how much space is now behind your heart and how if you really concentrate you can soften that space. You may have to lift your head and reposition it so the back of your heart has more space. That should feel good. Now, roll back over. You can go the other side if you'd like. Knees bent, elbows bent. Come on up to seated. We're going to get our bolster organized. Oh, I can hardly wait for this one. You're going to bring your bolster <clears throat> maybe a third the way down. i got to sip my coffee. I slept in this morning and I didn't have my second coffee. Mmm. Oh, good. It's still warm. So bring your bolster a third of the way down. <clears throat> and in this one, I'm going to be facing, facing you, but you may just flip to the other side when we do the other side. You're going to get this bolster kind of hugging into your left. I'm on my left, left side. My knees are bent. I'm going to stick my butt back first. So important, and when you do that, you just, oh, that, that feels good. You're landing each foot on top. If you need a block, you could bring your blocks up top just in case. <clears throat> We're going to, oh my goodness, how great does this feel? You're going to fall over, lie on top of your bolster and take your block, maybe it's at the second height, Oh my goodness. For those of you who have never done this, I'm thinking Sheila, zoomer in the room. Oh, this is like so delicious because we are opening up the right side of the body, but also asking the left side of the body to do something as well. So when we're, when we're doing our banana asanas and we're doing our, our side work, say in triangle, these are the places that the tissues are being asked to wake up. Ah, so you can use your arms. Put your arms anywhere that makes sense or feels comfortable for you. Again, if you don't have a bolster, you take a bath towel and you wrap it up really tight. This could do the same thing. Or even your mat. You could use your mat. And um, <clears throat> that will do, the, it won't be as high and it won't be as comfy as a, a bolster, but it will, do the, it will do the job. Notice that when you start feeling, you do tense a little bit. So see if you can't relax your belly and stick your butt back. Ah, in every exhale, it's like, oh yeah, I can feel that. Oh, I can feel that. Ah, all right, let's try the other side. I'm going to just switch so that my body is facing you guys, but if you don't have to do that. You could just simply switch sides, not move the bolster at all. <clears throat> and then, of course, expecting complete differences on each side. So tuck it up close to your hip, oh, and then fall over. Wow, that is so good. Hmm. <sighs> Make sure that you are taking advantage of the exhale to sigh, groan, moan, and you know, it's one of the advantages of zooming in or YouTubing in is nobody is telling you to be quiet in a yoga studio anymore at all. You can make whatever noises you need to make. That's just great. And when you do those noises, you're going to feel the lowest rib and the diaphragm release, and you're going to feel a reaction of relaxation 
into your whole body. So groan, moan, do what you need to do. Ah. Hmm. And then <clears throat> if you don't need the block, you could experiment, and especially the, on the second side, because we've already opened up the other side, you could experiment with not being on the block or being on your arm if you don't have blocks or your head. But try not to crunch everything. Try to make sure that your throat's nice and open and that the breath is flowing easily. Yeah, nice. Use your fingertips, push yourself up to seated. We're gonna do caterpillar on a bolster. So uh, for, for reason, uh, reasons unbeknownst to me, people seem to wanna name everything differently even though it's just a forward bend. So let's come up on, into seated. I like to pull, because this is more of a, a fascia connective tissue kind of practice and a letting go practice, pull the stuff away and then let your legs really relax. They can be wider than hip width apart. And you're gonna just have at least the top of your bolster um, on the upper thighs. And oh, this feels good. So we're coming over the bolster and then you can take your block isn't this great it's just like oh such a, a nice surprise for the zoomers and then you can take your block and just lay your forehead on it and there's actually some other nice things when you lay your forehead in that there's tension in the muscles in your forehead from using your eyes and just stuff you know stuff so we're going to just let that go by having like a little pressure on our forehead, which is kind of like a self massage. So again, as we think about all those words, imagine how your body reacts when you say self massage. You can even say it like that. And let your arms relax. They could be beside you so that your arm bones are heavy as well. And then, Palms open to the ceiling, fingers relaxed, toes relaxed, back body relaxed. Hmm. Hmm. Come on up. Take your stuff away. So the next thing is I'm going to use the blocks for it. It's lizard on blocks. This is where all, the, all of these poses have now set something up, the ones that we just did, for some ones that are a little more challenging. So you're going to take your blocks, put them over to the right side. When we set up one side, you'll just be able to slide them over to the, to the other side. And we'll enter this into down, from down dog. <clears throat> now make sure you have them at least a third down your mat. You bring your hands in front of your blocks, tuck your toes. Oh, move into down dog. Whoa. Just take a moment here. So we're gonna do this really carefully, especially for those of you who have knee issues. You wanna really pay attention to taking care of the transitions whenever your knee is bent. Bring your knee into your chest, curl your back a lot, flex your right foot, the knee, right knee is in the chest, and then <clears throat> place the edge of the right foot behind your left hand. But you still have the back leg, the back foot, the two front hands, and however many hands you have, um, really supporting your weight. Then you're going to inchworm the back leg back, the back foot back, and land your right thigh, the outside of your right thigh, on a block, or both blocks. Hmm. I did say we were doing lizard, but I lied. 
we're doing pigeon on these blocks. Okay, we'll do lizard in a moment. And then come back down as low as you can go. You should be feeling quite a lot over into that IT band. I can hardly speak. That's how much there's feelings. You may want to look behind your left shoulder to make sure that your left leg is doing its business straight out of your left hip. And then drop your left knee and then come to shoelace side of the foot, of the back foot. Oh, yeah. Okay, lots of information here. And as you roll your left hip towards the block, now I'm only on one block, but I always set it up for two just in case I land on the other one. Oh, there is a lot of stuff happening here. <sighs> so it's nice to be elevated because then, oh, look, just look, my hands are like breaking into a sweat. I feel like, oh, there's a lot of information in, the, in those legs coming out. Um, so being elevated, for those of you who have knee issues, this is a really good idea just going forward always so that you never feel vulnerable around your knee. But noticing how much your hips have to do with how your knee might feel. So coming out of this, we're going to bring our hands right underneath our shoulders, tuck the back toes, straighten the back leg. Now bend your elbows as if you're doing just a pumping the earth away so that you become aware that you're going to push the earth away and this is going to keep your knee safe. Flex your right foot, bend your elbows. Now push the earth away, but keep that right foot on the floor. Bring the right knee into your chest. Curl your back a lot, down dog. Now, if that was the right spot for you, you just slide the blocks over. Mm, down dog. And then bring left knee into your chest. Curl your back a lot. Land the outside of the left foot behind your right hand. Try to move it in front of the blocks. Now, inchworm that back leg further back as you start dropping your body. And then land the outside of your left thigh. Oh, on this block. This is where Krista and I, we really can groan together because, yeah, because we have some stuff on this side. <laughs> so again, Press the right knee back and look behind. See if the right leg is straight or coming straight out of the hip socket. Then drop the right knee. Oh, that's not better. And then shoelace side of the foot on the floor. And then come down into your version of pigeon on a block. Oh, wow. So for us ladies, Usually our, our pelvis, our glutes, our legs are the biggest things in our body. They're the, the most muscles, the most tendons, the most. So this is where all the good stuff likes to hide, likes to help us prepare to run away, to do our things, whatever it is that we're doing. This is the place where all the stuff happens. So it's normal to feel like a rush of energy. And that energy can be, you know, let's not be judgy and say it's like bad energy or bad stress. It's just, it's just, it's just us. It's just our bodies talking. So just have like a nice kind of awareness and like actually I always am so grateful that I still feel my practice after so many years and so many times um, I'm still so motivated to come to the mat because I can feel things and I get a chance to breathe in a serious way different from the rest of my day so whatever you're feeling be yeah be grateful for that flex those toes Pull the toes towards the shin bones. 
Oh my goodness, roll the right hip down. Oh, yeah. There are variations of this where you go right into a twist and you can imagine how great that would be too. But we're not doing that. We're gonna press through the palms of our hands, bring them right underneath our shoulders. Tuck the back toe, straighten the back leg, lift the back knee. Bend your elbows so you know you're not gonna be pressing on that front foot or using that knee. You're gonna use your muscles to press the earth away and then bring the left knee into your chest. Curl your back a lot and land your left foot into down dog. Oh. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is lizard, because I did say we were gonna do lizard. So you're gonna move those blocks over to the right side of your mat. Actually, they come forward a little bit. So just like just a few inches, uh, like 10, 12 inches away. Do I have to do centimeters too? Um, yeah, from the top of your mat. Press through the palms of your hands. <clears throat> into down dog. Bring your left knee into your chest. Land your left foot on the outside of those blocks <clears throat> behind your left hand. So I want your chest to be on the inside of your left leg. Now angle out that left foot. So I want you to look at it and make sure that your left knee is in line with your second and third toe. And once again, you may have to kind of inchworm your back leg back. And now you've got your blocks right underneath your shoulders, and then you're gonna come down as best you can. So the key thing here is not to stick your butt up because that would just be easy. You want to bring your whole body down so that you are opening up oh, the inside of your left thigh, the front of your right quadricep. If holding your leg away from gravity is too much, for you, in other words, your breath has become uh, not, so, not so good, not your best effort, then drop your right knee. You could do shoelace side of the right foot. This is really gets into some good stuff. Mm. Nice. This is tough, so we're not gonna stay here for very long. We're gonna press through the palms of your hands on your blocks, tuck your toes back toes in, straighten the back leg, curl your back a lot, pull the belly in, then left foot goes back into down dog. Move your blocks over to the other side, down dog. <clears throat> you bring your right knee into your chest, right foot on the outside of those blocks near your right hand, and then inchworm the back leg back, and then Land your forearms, Oh, this side is different. Angle out that right foot, make sure that it's good and your torso's on the inside. Lizard on blocks, whoa. If you're not feeling anything, drop your left knee. Keep the pelvis down. Remember that's the heaviest thing in your body, usually. And then shoelace side of the foot on the floor. If you'd like to try that. Wow. This is, this is a pose where I break a sweat. It's like, whoa, so much information. Press through the palms of your hands. You can come up. For those of you who found that too much, I'm just showing you an alternative where your arms are straight. Maybe you have the back leg lifted and you're just in a lunge, um, a lizard that is a little more manageable for you. Nice. So we're gonna curl our backs and then bring right leg back into down dog. Ooh. And I'm using the blocks for my down dog because that just feels nice. The next thing we're gonna do is frog on a bolster. And I hope you have something that acts like a like a bolster. You're gonna bring it, come into the middle of your mat and really actually in the back. Your knees are gonna be wide. 
Let me move these. Uh, your knees are really wide. You're going to bring this um, bolster, depending on your height, uh, the length of your torso, you'll want to be having your whole body on this bolster. Okay? So you come forward first, and now you're going to take your legs out 90 degrees. And the knees and the thighs are below the level, so do that right away. Don't go down on the bolster yet. Flex your feet. Flex your feet so that you know your knees are really okay. And then just oh, move your chest onto your bolster. And then we want to take the weight. I know that some of you, Pat, like Pat, you don't want to put any weight on your knees like this. So depending on the flexibility that we've created or just your DNA, you, you'll want to modify this if you have to. So some of you will be on your back instead. Those of you who know how to do that, go ahead. Now, I, oh my goodness, my blocks are way down there, but the block could be a nice little place where you put your forehead. Or maybe you found, a, you know, the end of your bolster is a place where you can put your chin. Oh. Or you could have, if you don't have anything, elbows or you run out of bolster. Yeah, elbows bent and take the size of your head, the palms of your hand. Now, the thing that happens here is it's so intense for most of us that we hold on to everything at the belly level. So I want you to take an inhale, and then on an exhale, side groan moan. <sighs> and notice that when you do that, you're getting more and more space in your sacrum. And this is a beautiful symmetrical pose for those of us who suffer from, and there's so many of us, like, oh my goodness, I don't think, I don't think I've taught anyone that has come to the class, our live classes, that doesn't have some imbalance between the left and the right. So this is a beautiful pose to try to let the side that is hanging on for dear life, for it to let go. I'm feeling a lot of letting go. <laughs> when we come off of the frog on a bolster, um, the first thing we're going to do is just extend the legs to the back of our mat. Oh. And we're still resting on the bolster. So kneecaps are on the floor and shoelace side of the feet are on the floor. And we're just going to let that space, oh, I just heard a big crack. Let the space kind of be there. So it's like a softness that's now in your low back and a release of the effort. Good. Now the next thing we're going to do is saddle on a bolster and we're going to take a careful entrance. Those of you who, have, who are not able to do saddle will know right away. Your knees won't take it. Your quadriceps won't take it. So you can do happy baby on your back. So I think I'll show that first so that those of you who need to do that can do that. And then the rest of us will go into saddle on a bolster. So, this is for people who cannot even, well, for whatever reasons, can't even sit, or it's too painful to sit in Japanese seated posture. So, instead of what we're going to do next, the saddle on a bolster, you'll be on your backs, and you'll be doing happy baby. So, you'll be grabbing the sides of your feet, and pulling down. And you can be like a happy baby. I know it's not, it's not the most photographed yoga pose, but you know what I mean. You can be like a happy baby in, in the bed, in the crib, moving around and feeling all the spaces and massaging your back. And you, the guys that are on your back, that's what you get to do while we do this next thing, which is saddle on a bolster. You're gonna bring your bolster into, roll it into the middle of your mat. <clears throat> I actually love this one. 
a lot. So your knees are wide. You're going to kind of sit on that bolster. There's variations on this. Make sure you have a block. Now, the first thing is you want to figure out, are my quadriceps being challenged? Are my knees being challenged? If they are, then you just sit right here and you let them be challenged. Otherwise, you lean back with your hands underneath your shoulders, lift your pelvis and tuck the tail. And because we're in Canada, I'll say we'll, we're going to keep a toonie in between the glutes and then we're going to release it. And then we're going to come all the way down. You can take your block with you. Oh, really, this is just such a glorious pose once you can get into it. The whole front body, it's like doing, it's like the rush of a full back bend where the whole front body gets a chance to release. Ah. Now, um, you don't go back if your knees are going to pop up because we really want, we want you to be in, uh, incrementally going into this pose. So if you feel tense and the knees are coming up and it's, it feels like you can't really relax in it, then come up onto your elbows looking forward or come up onto your hands. Okay, so either one. Oops, almost came off my block at the back of my head, middle of the head. Oh, now I'm going to show a more advanced um, saddle using a bolster because I think if you are here, this is the time to try to do it. Hmm. Come on up. For those of you who are challenged, those of you still on your back doing your happy baby, be happy. <laughs> and what we're going to do, for those of you who can sit like a, how I'm sitting comfortably, you're going to stick the bolster right at the base of your sacrum. You're going to again lift and tuck the tail, and then you're going to come back down. Now this is really just a beautiful little uh, curve that you are creating in the lumbar and then you will probably won't run out of, of length in your bolster but if you do then support your head if you have run out and then for some of you you could just hang here and this is just oh so good. And in any of these poses we're going through them quite quickly um, for this recording, this video, but if this is a pose that you feel like, oh, I could really hang out here, you just pause and hold it. There's nothing wrong with this pose to be held when you're feeling so much benefit. Mm. So always do that for yourself. Always choose how long. Dig your elbows in if you're on your more advanced saddle on a bolster and come on up. Oh, lift and reposition. Oh my goodness, everything is moving right into those femurs. Thinking Krista and I are going, whoa. <sighs> the next pose is supported bridge on a block. We're getting near the end, and the end things in this sequence are just yummy. So we're going to do, take your block, and we're going to come down. Just come down in a nice, easy way on your elbows, and then your whole back on the floor. Bring your feet close into your pelvis, hip width apart. You're going to take your block, experiment with whether or not you know, always try to see, can you go to the highest level? And if it doesn't work, then you go to the next level. So pull your feet towards your head, then take an inhale into your heart, and then exhale, press the feet into the floor, lift your hips, and then reposition the block on the sacrum. 
so that your buttocks are forward and relaxed. And then you can interlock your fingers to the webbing towards your feet. Baby fingers are on the floor or um, I'm enjoying lately just bringing my arms overhead, palms open to the ceiling and really releasing shoulders and the side body and of course the armpits. <sighs> Notice how the body is reacting to this and also just feel the breath massaging the whole front of your body, all your organs your whole nervous system. This is another pose that um, if you can do this every once in a while during your day, that would be really great. Feel your feet. Mm -hmm. And then, <clears throat> of course, if you're using this video you could be here for as long as you'd like but for yeah for the sake of time for the zoomers let's pull the feet towards the head and then lift the hips so much that you can just slide that block away and then tuck the tail oh my goodness it's hard to talk tuck the tail because it's like whoa the, reaction in the body is just like oh a flush and then bring the whole back body to the floor very slowly and then allow the knees to tent towards each other and we're going to take this block or the bolster and we're going to put it underneath the sacrum um, the bolster. Now for some of you that have a wall, we're going to be putting our legs up to the ceiling, but if you have a wall that's handy, that could be really great. So you'll have to figure out how to do it against the wall, but basically you press your feet, knees bent against the wall, you get really close, and then you tuck tuck that bolster, you pull it around and you tuck that bolster right underneath your sacrum. I'm going to do it on my mat with my legs up in the air and I like to do roots of toes together. Now immediately what happens ooh, is all of a sudden you're starting to create a lot more space in the cervical curve. So just inchworm your body away. And just hang out. If you're against the wall, oh, that, that should feel really great. So we're doing this really beautiful symmetrical um, lumbar work. And the, using the weight of the legs. So the legs are finding their new, more improved position into the hip sockets. And we're using gravity our weight of our legs to do this work. It's just so great. Now, those of you who have a favorite Shavasana music, bring your feet down. You're still on your, your <clears throat> bolster. This is the time to kind of gather your things for your Shavasana because we're going to be moving into these poses, we can roll up so that we can, on one side, so that we can get our favorite music going. We're going to take the bolster. So those of you against the wall will have to move away from the wall because now we're going to go into Shavasana. But we are going to take the bolster. I'm just going to slide my butt behind it and bring it underneath our knees and have the legs just like they want to be. And then we're going to come all the way down. I like to tuck the tail here because I really want to emphasize the space again that we've created in the lumbar curve. So we're going to come down, get your music going, get your blankies. Maybe you've put something on your, you know, beautiful lavender thing on your eyes. 
And before we settle, I'd like you to take a big inhale. And I'd like you to hold the inhale and just notice all the places that it is pushing and that how your inhale is like your little masseuse on the inside. So take another bit of air through your nose. Hold it. Continue to hold it. Relax your eyes and then exhale. Ha. Ah, let your whole body settle down into your version of Shavasana today. And if you don't have a bolster, of course, you can use your blocks or anything to elevate your knees, backs of your knees. Take this time, precious time in your day, to really melt into the floor, to really check in on your face and your jaw, to smooth out all wrinkles. And every time your mind wanders, come right back to the, come right back to the feelings of your body touching the floor and getting heavier. And use this whole time in your day, blessed time, to truly let go. inhale, keep your eyes closed, and begin moving only your fingers. Try to feel them all individually, and then let your hands be still. And then wiggle your right toes only. Try to feel them individually, let them be still. And then your left toes, and let them be still. And bring your legs together. Bring your arms overhead, grabbing the elbows or extending your arms if you have space. And take a big inhale and let's practice this breath retention again. So take a big inhale through your nose. Feel and notice where the air goes, how it expands your body. Sip up a little more air. And then exhale, let everything go with a groan, a moan, a sigh. Oh. And then bring one knee and the other knee into your chest. Curl your back into a tight little ball. I like to cross my wrist and grab the outside of the opposite leg or foot. So I really have a good grip. Take a big inhale. And notice that your whole body kind of floats up. And then exhale, soften the, the front of your body and squish and hug and hug and squish. Delicious hugging. 
Then allow your head to come back down to the floor. Ooh, relax your jaw, your shoulders, your neck. And then roll over to whatever side you would like to. And then you can use a block as a little pillow on that side or your arm. Oh, close your eyes and begin easy breathing. Easy breathing so you feel your rib cage move. Front, back. Top, bottom, left, right. Easy breathing. And then notice your more peaceful body. And then notice your more peaceful mind. And using your fingertips, bent elbows, bent knees, push yourself up to seated. Move your bolster out of the way <clears throat> so that we can have a chance to do a grounding breath together. Cross your legs, but then uncross them and recross them because we always do the same thing. I know I do. And flex your feet and rub your legs. Notice how alive they feel. And then bring your hands into the middle of your chest, thumbs touching your sternum. Your eyes can be closed or open. Take an inhale through your nose. Feel your whole body fill up with air. Let that air warm up inside. And then when you exhale through your nose, humble your brain towards your heart so you feel the warm air pass your fingertips. And this today is the perfect moment to practice gratitude. Thank you so much for zooming in or YouTubing in, taking the time to be, to give yourself this gift of being on the mat, breathing and feeling. It means the world to me that you're joining. Namaste. Mm.